right, review for the quiz. Find the radius with a circumference of 42 pi. Well, remember, it's a good idea to start off with the formula. So since it says radius, we're going to use the 2 pi r formula. Now, we know the circumference over here, 42 pi, equals 2 pi r. To get r by itself, which we're trying to solve for, we're going to divide by 2 pi. Now you can do it separately or at once. I just say do it at the same time. Pi cancels, the 2 cancels. Pi cancels, 42 divided by 2 is 21 meters. Up a little bit. 21, it's still a little bit, right? Third time is a charm, 21 meters. Okay, circumference is 39, but this time we're looking for the diameter, so I'm just going to start off with my diameter version. Pi times diameter. So, I know 39 centimeters equals pi times diameter. If I divide by pi, I will get a diameter of rounded 12.4 centimeters. Number three, area. So right off the bat, we'll write the area formula. Area equals pi r squared. There is no, I don't know why I, I, know why I wrote it. There's no d version of this with diameter. It's just pi r squared. So, we know the diameter is 19.2, but we need the radius. So the radius is half of that, 9.6. And I'm going to plug that into the formula. So pi times 9.6 squared. Now, 9.6 squared is 92.16. So you can write 92.16 pi if it asks for the exact answer. And if it asks for a rounded answer, you just multiply it out and you get 289.38 centimeters. And this would be pi centimeters, sorry. So that's two different ways of doing it, leaving in terms of pi and not. Now we do the same thing here, except we're working backwards. We know the area, and we're also trying to find the diameter. So when we get the radius, we have to remember to double it. So area. Uh, is not 7. Area is 7 of 7 equals pi r squared. So we're going to divide by pi and we're going to get a decimal which is 225 even for me that's bad. Sixteen equals r squared. In which case we just square root both sides and we get r equals fifteen. And it's actually not fifteen whole. The problem is it's fifteen point zero zero something and you didn't round out to the thousand spot. So we'll just say the diameter is thirty inches. Now obviously fifteen squared is two twenty five. That does not accommodate for the point one six, but it's a tiny decimal. Okay, convert 60 degrees to radians. That's 60 over 1 times pi over 180. And effectively all this means is you have 60 over 180 pi. So if you just reduce that, don't divide it and turn it into a decimal, leave it as a fraction. That's going to be 1 third pi or pi over 3. Same thing. Just different ways of writing it. Now I'm going the other direction. 5 pi over 4, which could be written 5 fourths pi, convert to radians. Well, we want the, the pi to cancel, so this time we're going to put pi on the bottom and have 180 on the top.
So the pi is cancel, and you just type your calculator 5 times 180 divided by 4. And you get 225 degrees. Back to radians. So 105 over 1 times pi over 180. I did forget something, I just realized the word rad. So you have to say radians, pi third radians. So basically it's 105 over 180, which reduces to 7 over 12 pi radians. And again, you could write 7 pi over 12 radians also, either way. Okay, going back to degrees, 5 pi over 6 times for the pi on the bottom to cancel, the 180 on the top, those cancel, 5 times 6, sorry, 5 times 180 divided by 6 is 150 degrees. Okay, find the arc length. So this is just using our formula. Arc length is equal to the central angle divided by 360 times 2 times pi times the radius, which in this case is 18. And you just crunch the numbers. And you get 15 pi inches or 47.1 inches. That's 15 times 3.14. And again, if you use the pi key, it's slightly different, and that's okay. Now this time, notice, we're not trying to find the length of the arc, because we already have that here. We're trying to find the measure of AB. Okay? So in this case, we know the arc length. We don't know the central angle. So you can put, you know, a letter up there like X, you can put this here, whatever you want. Over 360 equal, well not equals, what am I doing? Times, sorry about that, times 2 pi 12, being the radius. Now, 2 pi 12 divided by 360 ends up being 0 0.209. And again, that's times the measure of AB, or if you wanted to put an X here, that's fine, whatever. So now we're just going to divide both sides by 0 0.209. And that will give us the measure of AB, the arc, is 114.26 degrees. All right, 11. Find the circumference of F. Okay, you can do this the long way by using the actual formula and then finding the radius and then recalculating the uh, circumference by doubling and multiplying by pi. But you're actually going to end up undoing some of the steps you did. So there is that shortcut we showed you, and that's where you take the arc length over the circumference equal to the central angle over 360. And then you just cross multiply and divide, and you get 58.03. Now, I could show you how to do it the long way, but we're actually going to do that on 12. So, again, you could find the radius, like we're going to do on 12, and then you would just double it and multiply by 3114 to get the circumference. But this method here is a shortcut to doing that. You can do whatever works for you. Okay. So, on number 12, similar idea. We know that the arc length is 19.71. And then we use the formula, central angle, 
over 360 times 2 pi r. Now the reason we can do it the shortcut way is really 2 pi r is, so we're going back to 11 here, 2 pi r is a circumference. So you could actually put a big C here if we were doing 11. Okay, and then you would just have to divide that fraction and then divide that into 19, you know, 19.71. And that would give you circumference. But in this problem, we're actually trying to find the radius. So we have to divide by everything. So if we do 55 divided by 360 times 2 times 3.14, we get a decimal. And that decimal is 0.96. And that's being multiplied by r. So we just divide by 0 0.96, that's a horrible 6, and we find out the radius is 20.53 centimeters. Okay, I actually want to show you the long way, the other way at 11. If you don't want to see that, you just fast forward a little bit. So, again, the arc length is 46.75 equal to 290 over 360 times 2 pi r. But remember, I can take this out and just treat it like a C. So now, if I take my calculator and divide 290 by 360, I get 0.81. So that's 46.75 equals 0.81, basically C. Now if I divide by 0.81, so 46.75 divided by 0.81, what do I get? It's slightly different, I think, you know, well, I use 3.14. But this time I end up with 57.7, but that's extremely close to 58.03. And again, depending on whether you use pi or 3.14, your answer will slightly vary, and I will accept either way. But I just wanted you to see where that comes from and why you can actually save yourself a step on number 11. And even if you didn't want to do it the formula way, there's no reason to multiply by 2 and r and then work your way backwards through the problem. Recognize that 2 pi r is a circumference. All right, continuing on. So find the areas of the selected, of the sectors formed by JLK. So that means I want the gray area here. Um, a little dark here, but um, you can see the central angle is 50 degrees. So we're just gonna use our formula. Central angle divided by 360 times, and remember we're doing area. This is the pi r squared one, not two pi r. Okay. My radius, I'm just going to substitute it in right here. If I can get my radius to work, it doesn't seem to want to work. There we go. My radius is 7. So that's 7 squared, which is 49. So now I just basically crunch my numbers 50 divided by 360 times 3.14 times 49. Um, and again, if I don't. I can express it in terms of pi <clears throat> and not multiply it out. 6.8 pi, or I can say 21.35 square feet. And I believe that's using 3.14. Using pi key would be slightly different again, um, but I will accept either answer. <clears throat> Same setup here, 140, central angle divided by 360 times pi, and then 1 squared, which is just 1. So basically we're just doing 140 over 360 times pi. So that's 0.39 pi meters squared, or if I multiply it out, 1.22 meters squared. Okay, 15. Find the area of the entire circle. 
Now, when we're doing this, remember, this is going the other direction. So, on this case, in this case, we have already calculated the area of the sector. Okay? So this is actually going to go over on this side of the equal sign. Because think about it, our formula gives us the area of the sector. We already know the area of the sector, so it goes over here. Then we just go back to our formula. Central angle divided by 360 times pi r squared. Now notice, we don't have r, do we? But remember, this is the area of a circle. So if we think about this, we talked about this in class, if we just erase this and put a big A here, representing area, if I can get my marker to work. Okay, not working. So that is my area. Then all I need to do is find out what this, seriously? what this is, okay, and that will be the coefficient of A. So I get 156.38 equals 0.19 times the area. So now if I just divide by 0.19, I find out that the area of the circle is 823.05 square yards. Okay, 16 is similar, but we got to be careful. Okay, so on this one, this, the difference is this area is of the white section and not the shaded section, but we have the central angle for the shaded section. So we need to do 360 minus 40 to get 320 for this central angle. Now we do it the same way as 15. 11.17 is the area of the non-shaded sector. Then we have 320 over 360 times, again, pi r squared, which we can substitute a big A in. So if we do 320 divided by 360, we get 11.17 equals 0.8 repeating, okay? times A. So if we divide by 0.8 repeating, we get the area is 12.57 meters squared. Okay, so all these are referring to the hexagon over here, CGD. So CGD is basically the central angle on this hexagon this angle right here, which is one out of six, one, two, three, four, five, and six triangles. So six central angles. So if we do 360 divided by six, we get 60 degrees for CGD. Now, CGH is right here where GH is the apothem, or the apothem. So therefore, the apothem bisects that angle, so 18 is half of that, which is 30 degrees. Now, HCG is right here. I think I do a different problem. There we go. HCG is this angle right here. Well. Remember, if we found know that one of the angles is 90, and we just found that the other one is 30, that's 120. If there's 180 degrees in a triangle, so that means that HCG is 60 degrees, which means the 30, 60, 90, one of our special triangles. And then last but not least, EGC. Now, E is here, G is here, C is here. Well, that's just two of our triangles, central angles, so that's 60 times 2, which is 120 degrees. 
All right, on a 21. Simple formula here. Formula for area of a kite is one half this distance times this distance. And you just multiply those numbers and you get 202.5 units squared. That's your area. Now, this one's a little tricky because what we have here is this is 16 and this is 2. So the entire length is 18. So we have 1 half times 18. Now, on the other one, since this is, this chord here is, bias, is intersecting with this diagonal here, it is bisected. So if this is 7 up here, this is 7 up here, which means that length is 14. And if we multiply those numbers, we get 126 units squared. And now here, since we have a rhombus, and we have 6 here, we're going to have 6 here. So if we have 10 here, we're going to have 10 here. So that means we're going to have 1 half 20 times 12. And that's going to give us 120 units squared. Now on to the last three. All right. Find the area of the regular poly polygon. Well, remember, the formula for area of a regular polygon is one-half the apothem times the perimeter. Well, we have, for this triangle here, we have 3 and 3.5. But we do not have this number right here. So we go back to our old friend Pythagoras. 3 squared plus b squared equals 3.5 squared. We end up with b squared equals 3.25. So if I do 3.5 squared minus 9, 3 squared, that's going to give me 3.25. I take the square root of both sides, that's going to give me b equals rounded 1.8, which means that means this is 1.8, but this is also 1.8, which means each side of this shape is 3.6. So therefore, the perimeter of this shape is 3.6 times 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So the perimeter is 21.6. Now, I know my apothem, so area equals... The apothem, which is 3, times 1 half, times 21.6, and the area of the shape is 32.4 square units. Okay, 25. This one's going to be a little bit of work. <clears throat> so first off, I need to find out what the central angle of this shape is. Well, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It's an octagon. So I have to do 360 divided by 8, and that's going to give me 45 degrees, okay? Now, if I go to my triangle, though, and I bisect that angle, this gives me 22.5 up here. Now, 14 is the diagonal, the hypotenuse. I need to find this side to help me get the perimeter. I also need to get, why is the ratio of that one work? There we go. I need to get this side, which I'm going to call X, to find the perimeter. And I need this side, Y, which is going to be my apothem. Since I don't have a special triangle here, I need to do trigonometry twice. Now, I want to find x first. So, to find x, this is opposite of 22.5. Well, for opposite and hypotenuse, that's sine. So, I'm going to do sine of 22.5 equals opposite over hypotenuse. Which means I just have to type in 14 times sine of 25 on my calculator. And that's going to give me 5.36.
Now remember, 5.36 is this distance here, but I have to double it to get the distance, the, one of the sides. So 5.36 times 2 means each, each side is 10.72. Now if I take that times 8, because there's 8 sides, I get a perimeter of 85.76. Now that's one key piece of information right there. Now I need to find the apothem. So I'm going to do sine. No, I'm not. Why would I do sine? I just did sine. And find the apothem, that's the adjacent side. So if I have adjacent and hypotenuse, that's cosine of 22.5 equals y over 14. I'm running into room on number 26. Again, I'm just going to do 14 times cosine of 22.5, which gives me an apothem of 12.93. Remember, that's my apothem. Another key piece of information. Now I have everything I need to find the area. One half the apothem times the perimeter. And that gives me a grand total of 554.44 units squared. And then last but not least, number 26, which is not as long. Um, I can draw an, a, a pentagon, but that would be ugly. But let's just do 360 divided by 5, which gives me 72. That's the central angle. But when I do my triangle, remember, I bisect it, so that's going to be 36. Now my apothem is the right angle line, so that's 7. I need to find this number here for my perimeter. Remember, that's going to be half on one side. So I need the opposite side, I have the adjacent side, so that's tangent. Tangent of 36 equals opposite over adjacent, total. So I type in 7 times tangent of 36, and I find out that x is 5.09. Now remember, that's not one side. I need to double that. So the side is actually going to be times 2, so that's going to be 10.18, which then I'm going to, so when I multiply that by the five sides, I get a perimeter of, Fifty point nine. Now I'm ready to find out the area. Area is one half the apothem, which is seven, times fifty point nine, and I get area is one seventy eight point one six square units. That's finally it.